Welcome to Google I.O. 2015. Afternoon. City daylight time will be. And we are privileged to serve over a billion users in each of these products. Last year, eight out of 10 phones that were shipped were based on Android. And today we serve 400 OEMs, 500 carriers, and over 4,000 devices. For Android Wear, today we are up to over seven models. Hyundai announced that its Sonata models are available in US dealerships right now. GM announced 13 of its Chevrolet models for 2016 will be based on Android Auto. Volkswagen just announced this week its entire lineup for 2016 is based on Android Auto. Today we have Sony and Sharp televisions shipping in the US, Philips, which is very popular in Europe, NVIDIA Shield. People have bought over 17 million devices. They've pressed the CAS button 1.5 billion times, and today you have over 20,000 applications you can cast from. HBO Now, for the first time, is coming to Google Play, and it's available across Android and iOS using CAS. The central theme of M is improving the core user experience of Android. We're excited to be able to fold in some of these improvements that we've seen in the ecosystem into the official Android platform. Apps will now ask you for permission the first time you try to use a feature instead of asking during app installation time. When I press the mic button, the app makes a request to the system to access the microphone, which then brings up this permission prompt. I can now go into settings, choose the app, see what permissions it has, and even modify them. Chrome Custom Tabs is a new feature that gives developers a way to harness all of Chrome's capabilities now, when I tap on a web link at the bottom, you'll notice that there's a custom transition animation. Now, remember, this is actually the Chrome browser now running on top of your app. With Chrome custom tabs, you're signed into your favorite site since it uses Chrome State when you want to link from an app to another app. So now, when I as a user tap on a verified link, the Android platform will seamlessly write me to the Twitter app. With Android Pay, users can simply and safely use their Android phone to pay in stores. Because all you have to do is unlock your phone like normal, place it in front of the NFC terminal to pay, and there's no need to open any app. Your actual card number is not shared with the store during the transaction. So people will be able to choose the most convenient way to activate Android Pay, either through our app or through any supported banking app. And we're working with leading financial institutions so you can securely use your existing debit and credit cards with Android Pay. We're also working with major US mobile carriers, works with any Android device with NFC. We'll work in over 700,000 stores across the US which accept contactless payments. We'll also be available in-app from developers selling physical goods and services to help you speed through the checkout process. The user simply touches the fingerprint sensor, which unlocks the phone, the phone will then make a secure NFC exchange with the payment terminal. And then the payment goes through, and you get the Android Pay notification of the transaction at the top. With the M release, you can also use your fingerprint to simply unlock your device or make Play Store purchases. Now when the user wants to purchase something, they just present their fingerprint like so, and it will process the payment. Android uses significant motion detection to learn if a device has been left unattended for an extended period of time. And I'm happy to say that we're seeing devices with M lasting up to two times longer in standby. And Type-C ushers in a new way of charging that works across hardware, really fast charging of devices, anything from three to five times faster. No more grappling to find the right direction for the charging plug. We now auto-select or chunk on each word boundary and we've also added an awesome floating toolbar for quick access to things like copy and paste. This system can now automatically learn which people and which apps you share with most frequently. We've added a drop-down to control the volume of individual audio streams, such as alarms and music. In the last 12 months, we've launched four major OS releases and seven different watches. So when you buy an Android Wear watch, you know it will keep getting better over time, always on screens, meaning you can see the time all the time always on apps. You can wear your shopping list on your wrist in this low power black and white mode. Directions with maps will stay on the screen. Jeff can scroll up and down through his notifications. When he sketches this cocktail glass, the watch recognizes it automatically in the new launcher. All you need to do is touch the watch face and you can start an app, recognize walking, running, and cycling as well as squats, sit-ups, and push-ups, Shazam can listen and recognize it using the watch's built-in microphone. You can browse and control the music that you want to hear. 
you'll be able to adjust your living room temperature with Nest. 4,000 apps built specifically for Android Wear. If you could connect more devices, things like parking meters, washing machines, airport kiosks, we think we can transform the experience for users. It's the smarter home. You can imagine a farmer managing the entire farm from our smartphone. A city's public transportation system, buses, bus schedules, parking spots, but it's really hard for device manufacturers. Just like in early days of smartphones, we needed to think through all the building blocks. We are announcing Project Brillo, which is the underlying operating system for the Internet of Things. We have taken Android and polished it down, hence the name. We are adding support for alternative connectivity like, like Thread so that there are low power wireless solutions as well. You need a common language. Weave is the communications layer so that devices can not only talk to each other and to the cloud and to your phone. A door lock can define lock and unlock as two phrases which all other devices in that ecosystem can understand and work off each other. And we will have a Weave certification program to make sure anything that is Weave certified can work together. So if you're writing a recipe application on your smartphone, the actual application can now turn on your smart oven. Your oven can be voice enabled easily because we provide voice APIs as part of this. And as a user, you get the same standardized setup for any connected device and the full stack will be ready to go by Q4 of 2015. Machine learning is what helps us answer the question, what does the tree frog look like? Deep neural nets are a hierarchical layered learning system. The first layer can understand lines and edges and shadows and shapes. A second layer may understand things like ears, legs, hands, and so on. And the final layer understands the entire image. Our current deep neural nets are over 30 layers deep. When you speak to Google, our word error rate has dropped from 23% to 8% in just over a year. We want to give users this information even before they know they need it. Understand your context. And in a different context, you need different things. But you know, context is also about getting what you're saying. And we understand more than 100 million places. Once we understand context, we then want to proactively bring you answers. So the knowledge graph is Google's understanding of the world and all the things in it. We have over 1 billion entities. Help you take action. Get stuff done. And you know, in a mobile world, you get stuff done with apps. You can order an Uber or a Lyft. In the context of your commute, you can play your Pandora station. You can reorder groceries instantly, now on tap. Quick answer to quick question without having to switch context. I don't know much about the movie. Tap and hold on the home button. Google Now brings me information. The app itself doesn't have to make any modifications. Oh, and of course, he forgot to pick up dry cleaning. With a simple tap and hold on the home button, you get help. So when you tap and hold on the home button, you're telling Google Now, hey, here's something I need help with. So yes, I can you know, fiddle with the phone, open a new tab, back at the keyboard, or I can tap on Hugh, and I get information about Hugh Laurie. Google Photos, a home for all your photos and videos. Google Photos automatically backs up from your phone, tablet, computer, and even your camera memory cards. I can view my memories across days, but with a simple pinch across months, and again, across years. Every interaction feels fast, as if all these photos are local. But in fact, not a single photo in today's demo is actually on the phone. A simple swipe to the right brings up my collections. I'm just gonna tap the blue search button and you'll see all my photos organized by the people, places, and things that matter the most in my life. I have not tagged a single one of them. Now, we've tapped on share and as you can see, we make it easy to share with any of your favorite services. Let's have a look at all the photos I've taken of my niece. But what's amazing is I can go all the way back to the week she was born. Normally, it would take me forever to find these photos. Instead, I just tap the search box. I'll type snowstorm in Toronto. And instantly, I'm able to find these photos that I'm looking for. Make adjustments tuned to the photo's color, lighting, and subject. Or by selecting and tapping the plus button, Google Photos lets me create collages, animations, 
movies with soundtracks. A swipe to the left brings up my photos assistant. Here, I will get suggestions for new creations made from my photos and videos. We want to make it easy for you to share, so let's select them all. Now, rather than having to do this tediously, I just press and hold on one of the photos and drag my finger. So in this case, I'm simply going to tap get a link. I can share it any way that I want without needing to log in or download any app. Because Dave is logged in, he has an extra button. And that lets him copy all of these photos and videos to his Google Photos library instantly. You can now back up and store unlimited up to 16 megapixels for photos and 1080p high definition for videos. We store compressed versions of the photos and videos. Google Photos is rolling out starting later today on Android, iOS, and web. Android One devices are available in seven countries. Android One phones run the up-to-date version of Android. It's now possible to buy a quality Chromebook laptop for under $150. Connectivity can be a real challenge. So last October, we launched a streamlined version of our search results page. It was 10 times smaller and 30% faster. We're working hard to support offline capabilities. Today, we're sharing a preview of version 1.3 with significant enhancements, full editing and debugging support for C++. Polymer 1.0. Make it easy to drop in common features like toolbars and menus, cloud test lab, to automate the testing of mobile apps. Build an app without spinning up servers or writing back-end code. It allows you to index your app content into Google search results. We're expanding beyond Android and Chrome and broadening the platform to iOS. Subscribe to topics in cloud messaging. And we found that using personalization doubles the likelihood that a user will install an app. You can browse content based on age. And so now you can use the popular character browser or the character badge to find them. And so I'm very excited to announce today we are launching the Android Nano Degree. Six month course for just $200 a month. And we cover the entire life cycle of Android development. There are more than one million cardboard viewers out there in the world. So the new design fits phones with screens as large as six inches. The cardboard SDK for Unity will support both Android and iOS. Expeditions. And all of these devices are synchronized. OK, you guys ready? Pick up your devices and look in your cardboard. What is that? Oh, there's there's a shark. Whoa! Cameras kind of only capture the world like this. It's like watching a, a flat version of the world through a tiny little window. Jump enables any creator to capture the world in VR video. GoPro plans to build and sell a jump-ready 360-degree camera array. The assembler takes 16 different video feeds, and we then use these in-between viewpoints to synthesize the final imagery. Near things look near, far things look far, and you can look all around you. It just feels like you're there. Starting this summer, YouTube will support jump. Putting technology and computer science to work on important problems the car is using computer vision to navigate accurately. Can deliver LTE speeds, 10 megabits per second, directly to handsets. Using technology at work to solve problems for everyone in the world. Afternoon. Maybe daylight time will be.